Hello and welcome to the Three Pillars of D&D cast. I'm Jesse. I'm Emma. And I, Tyler. I don't know why I used to have like fun things to say, but now I'm just now I'm just Tyler. You're just old and boring I'm now. I'm part yep. of the capitalistic machine. Yes. All right. So <laughs> in this episode, we're going to be discussing the sorcerer class and uh, just basically going through that. Let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> So, the sorcerer, golden eyes flashing, a human stretches out her hand and unleashes the dragon fire that burns in her veins. As an inferno rages around her foes, leathery wings spread from her back and she takes to the air. Long hair whipped by a conjured wind, a half-elf spreads his arms wide and throws his head back, lifting him momentarily off the ground. A wave of magic surges up in him, though through him and out from him in a mighty blast of lightning. So, yeah, so that's the general idea behind the sorcerer, right? <laughs> <laughs> that lazy. Yeah, I did. There's there there are magic users who are born with exotic or foreign blood in them in some way that gives them natural magic power. The, the whole idea is that it, it's kind of a a raw magic idea. So raw magic, magic is a part of every sorcerer's suffusing body, mind, and spirit with a latent power that wants to be tapped. Some sorcerers wield magic that springs from an ancient bloodline infused with the magic of dragons. Others carry a raw, uncontrolled magic within them, a chaotic storm that manifests in unexpected ways. Sorcerers have no use for spellbooks and ancient tomes of magic lore that wizards rely on, nor do they rely on a patron to grant their spells as warlocks do. By learning to harness and channel their own inborn magic, they can discover new and staggering ways to unleash that power. Unexplained powers. Sorcerers are rare in the world, and it's unusual to find a sorcerer who is not involved in the adventure life in some way. People with magical power seething in their veins soon discover that the power is in a light to stay quiet. A sorcerer's magic wants to be wielded, has a tendency to spill out in unpredictable ways if it isn't called on. Sorcerers often have obscure or coincidental motivation driving them to adventure. Some seek a greater understanding of the magical force that infuses them, or the answer to the mystery of its origin. Others hope to find a way to get rid of it or unleash its full potential. Whatever the goals, sorcerers are every bit as useful in a, to an adventure party as wizards, making for a comparative lack of grasping their magic and no, magical knowledge with enormous flexibility and using the spells they know. So that's a good way of summing up why <laughs> sorcerers are different than wizards. They have a natural inborn power and they sacrifice knowing all the spells essentially for being a little bit better at casting the ones they do have. All right, as a sorcerer, you gain the following class features. Hit points. You have a 1d6 hit die. Your proficiencies are... You have no armor proficiencies. You have oh, no. daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, light crossbows for weapons. No tools. Um, constitution and charisma saving throws. And you get to choose two skills from arcana, deception, insight, intimidation, persuasion, and religion. When you look at the proficiencies, obviously they're not a heavy combat focus. They're they got enough to survive, but they're not meant to be your frontliners. As 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 should be obvious as as most full casters with their with their skills, you can choose from. You know, it's mostly magic. Uh, it's like history, intelligence, and charisma based kind of of uh, abilities overall like there's an expectation when it comes to wizards that they sh that are sorcerers i should say that they should know things like arcana and religion and things like that you can actually run a sorcerer like dump stat on intelligence um they don't have to be smart they don't have to be wise either they just have to be charismatic and that's that's the major stat that matters for them you're going to see probably more people using intimidation or persuasion and deception when they when they make uh sorcerers and insight arcana and religion as much right and mm -hmm. Uh, talking them their way through a problem or lying their way or you know even trying to scare people are going to be your better go-to when it comes to sorcerer for outside of combat kind of functions nothing really that helps them with exploration though huh <laughs> no um uh tyler do you want to go ahead and sum up spell casting for uh, sorcerers is like explain the whole ones they know oh. and what they can spell okay it. so basically how sorcerers work is they get a lot more spell slots than spells known 
So sorcerers start with two spells known, and they get a spell, and they get to know one more spell every single level until level eleven, in which it turns to every other level they get a new spell to learn. And then at level seventeen, they just stop learning spells. Now spell slots, on the other hand, progress like like any other spell caster, any other full caster, you know, the typical table. Oh, okay, so uh, what do you end up having by the end? The six is you have six cantrips, you're going to have 15 spells known, and you're going to be able to cast four, three, 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 two, two, and one by the end. So you're still, that's, and that's what every wizard, right? That's what wizard has at the end for yeah. spell slots. But you have, you're going to have more. With your spell points, um, you can regain spell slots. Um, do you have more cantrips as a sorcerer than you do as a wizard? You get more to start out, but I think you end with the same. Sorcerers are basically just like the wizard, but they get one more. You know, they gain. Uh, another cantrip when the wizard does, but they start with four instead of three. So they end with six instead of five. Oh, okay. So they'd end up with one extra one then. That's supposed to kind of give them a little, because they're going to be using cantrips a lot, because that's mostly what they do. Sorcerer's Origin. Choose a sorcerer's origin which describes the source of your innate magical power. Draconic bloodline, detailed at the end of the class description, or one from another source. So basically, you don't get anything else for a sorcerer other than draconic bloodline line until you get another book. <laughs> Which sucks, but me. I think it, I, I actually thought Wild Magic one. was in there in the player's handbook. No, it's in uh, yeah. something else. Uh, no, no, I. I... I think, no, Wild Magic is in the player's handbook. Basically, this is the rules and the basic rules. Yeah, the, know, the basic, basic rules, rules just has the Draconic Bloodline. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is basic rules. And Tasha's called her everything. There's some new spells added to Sorcerer Spell List. So the cantrips that are added are Booming Blade, Green Flame Blade, Lightning Lure, Mind Sliver, and Sword Burst. The first level spells that were added were Grease, Tasha's, and Tasha's Classic Brew. The second level spells were Flame Blade, Flaming Spear, Magic Weapon, and Tasha's Mind Whip. The third level spells were Intellect Fortress and their Pure Touch. The fourth level spells were Fire Shield. The fifth level spells were Big, Big B's Hand. The sixth level spells were Flesh of Stone, Ultra Luke's Flame, Freezing Spear, and Tasha's Other Worldly Guys. Um, seventh level, it was um, Dream of the Blue Veil. Eighth level, we got Demi Plane. At ninth level, we got Blade Disaster. So the big thing on these is they're added. To the list of spells you can choose from when you go up levels, they're not added known spells. Just to clarify yep. on that. Spawns of Magic. Uh, at second level, you tap into a deep wellspring of magic within yourself. This wellspring is represented by sorcery points, which allow you to create a variety of magical effects. I already hate that it's called font. I have to say, I don't like that. Love that part. I think font and magic is awesome. I'm not even saying this to be like, oh yes, it's funny to piss off Emma. I just love font and magic. I actually like font and magic too, but um... I don't. I think it's stupid. <laughs> it's like you should be doing something else if you're gonna do font of magic. All right, so you start off with two sorcery points, and you gain more as you reach higher levels. Basically, you get a point in every level. I, I wish I'd just say that. You can never have more sorcery points than shown on the table for your level. You regain all spent sorcery points when you finish a long rest. Flexible casting. You can use your sorcery points to gain additional spell slots or sacrifice spell slots to gain additional sorcery points. You learn other ways to use your sorcery points as you reach higher level. Creating spell slots. You can transform unexpended sorcery points into one spell slot as a bonus action on your turn. The creating spell slots table shows the cost of creating a spell slot of a given level. You can create spell slots no higher in level than fifth. Any spell slot you create with this feature vanishes when you finish a long rest. I'll just kind of go through it here. Spell for a first level spell slot is two, for second it's three, third is five, fourth is six, and fifth is seven. By the way, it's on the exact same cost for spell uh, if you use spell point casting. There you go. I just thought that was interesting. And then you can convert converting a spell slot to a sorcery points. As a bonus action on your turn, you can expend one spell slot and gain a number of sorcery points equal to the slot's level. When you when you convert from spell to sorcery points, it's not an even exchange. You're kind of basically losing something each time. Yeah. So only do this if you really need another spell slot and only convert a spell slot to sorcery points if you if you really need sorcery points for some reason. Although a high level oh, yeah. sorcerer would probably value sorcery points over like a spell slot. You would think so. Ugh. All right. So we are going to talk about meta magic after the break and we're going to go to the break. Break time. <laughs>
Welcome to the sellout break, where uh, we try to plug our stuff, but we don't actually have any stuff. So, um, <laughs> buy a fifty-four foot uh, plush copy of Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> At nowhere. Do you want the creepiest stuffed animal you'll ever meet? You can get Emma on a stick. <laughs> I don't like you anymore. So, if you want to get a hold of us on, you can get a hold of us on Twitter at our dorky. Email us at ourdorkyfamily at gmail dot com. If you're watching this on YouTube, we have a podcast, and if you're listening to us on podcast, we have a YouTube. Well, we are on almost all the podcasts. If we're not on a podcast thing, get a hold of us, and we'll see about getting on that podcast format for you. Yeah, we'll infiltrate everywhere like a disease. Exactly. Oh, so. <laughs> she is never leaves. Alrighty. Um D D Beyond. Alright, let's get back to the show. Meta Magic. At third level you gain the ability to twist your spells and suit your needs. You gain two of the following meta magic options of your choices. You gain another one at tenth and seventeenth level. You can only use one meta magic option on a spell when you cast it, unless otherwise noted. Careful spell. When you cast a spell that forces other creatures to make a saving throw, you can protect some of those creatures from the spell's full force. To do so, you spend one sorcery point and choose any number of creatures up to your charisma modifier, minimum of one creature. A chosen creature automatically succeeds on a saving throw against the spell. So basically, this is how to use a fireball and not kill everybody. It's still a good chunk of damage. Yeah, it Just is. Just use lightning bolt, dude. Yeah, I, I know, but this... There's other uses for this, but basically, if you have to to throw a spell in the middle of your allies, this is just the meta magic you want to use to try to mitigate that a little bit, right? Mm, yeah. Distant spell. When you cast a spell that has a range of five feet or greater, you can spend one sorcery point to double the range of the spell. When you cast a spell that has a touch, a range of touch, you can spend one sorcery point to make the range of the spell thirty feet. I think this is actually a really nifty one. There's a lot of spells that have a, a touch feature that I think are not as good because they have a touch feature, and adding that thirty feet can really make a big difference with them. And doubling the range of like really long distance spells, like say fire bolts or eldritch blast, for example, let you get things from really far away. And uh, I I think this one's kind of cool. I think it's really fun to just like figure out what the um longest range you can cast eldritch blast is in D and D Beyond. And this spell, oh, with that new sorcerer feat, just made it onto that build. Now I can cast eldritch blast. 1,200 feet away. If you're keeping track, that's four football fields. Wait, oh, God. <laughs> four football fields? That's four football fields, yes. Empowered spell. When you roll damage for a spell, you can spend one sorcery point to re-roll a number of the damage dice up to your charisma modifier. Minimum of one. You must use the new rolls. You could use empower spell even if you already have to use a different meta magic option during the casting of the spell. I think that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it's a really good one, especially since you can combine it with other ones. Oh, um, yeah. It, it's one of the ones that most people it. highly recommend. I can't say yeah. that they're wrong. Bended spell. When, when you cast a spell that has a duration of one minute or longer, you can spend one sorcery point to double its duration to a maximum duration of 24 hours. There you go. I, I've looked for spells that I want to extend. I haven't found very many of them. I'm sure they exist. I, I just don't think I've had the right... I never played a sorcerer in a game, so I really haven't got a chance to experiment with these as much as I really want to. I think if you were, like... If you were, say, had dark vision on, you're going to be underground for a very long time, it might be worth doubling the duration on that. I, I'd be real hesitant to use a sorcery point on anything that had a concentration for duration. Yeah. Because... Yeah, what happens if you get, you know, beamed in the head or something and you lose concentration, you lost the sorcery point, you don't really get the double of the duration anymore. I mean, I, it's I, gonna I, be sad. Yeah, so I, I think this definitely has its places, but I, I I'm uh, I'm not sure where. Heightened spell. When you cast a spell that forces a creature to make a saving throw to resist its effects, you can spend three sorcery points to give one target of the spell disadvantage. On its first saving throw made against the spell. All right, so this is if you really want a spell to hit, essentially. If it's like that important, three sorcery points is a heck of an investment, though. I mean, you can't even do this until level well, level three when you get it, I suppose. But you only able to do it once. I mean, that's that's a big commitment. But I I do think there's going to be times when you're going to want to use this particular meta magic. Oh yeah. 
Quick and spell. When you cast a spell, it's a casting time of one action. You can spend two sorcery points to use the casting time to one bonus action for this casting. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of spells I, I, I could think of that I want to cast as a bonus action. Uh, yeah, because of the rules on spell casting, you can do you could do a, a cantrip that has an action casting cost, and then you could cast a leveled spell that has a bonus action for casting cost and for casting time using this meta magic in order to pop two spells off in a row. Right? That, that's how you could. That's how you can do it because you can't cast two leveled spells. But you can do a cantrip and a leveled spell. Correct? Yeah. Settle spell. When you cast a spell, you can spend one sorcery point to cast it without any somatic or verbal components. I really like this one. I think in, uh, like, especially in a political intrigue kind of situation, if you're trying to get some really sneaky spells off while you're debating somebody in front of a crowd or up on stage doing a performance or something like that. I don't know about you, but I feel like this is the perfect spell to cast when the villain starts monologuing. Yes. Yes. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, this the, is the spell Harry casts whenever Doofenshmirtz just starts talking about his evil backstory. Exactly, I, I could. Uh, <laughs> I thought of that. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> like, but yeah, when the, when the bad guy is uh, is doing his monologue, yeah, you use subtle spell on a on a summoning, like summon elemental or whatever, and let them monologue. Get yourself that one minute you need to. to to, to summon something or whatever, I think yeah. that would be great. That, that would yeah, be... what's some good um, spells oh, yeah. that take some time to cast? Let's see. Uh, Sorcerer. <laughs> I, I am committed in this now. Yeah, okay, you know, now so... I need, now I need oh to know God. what the best monologuing <laughs> spells would be. Yeah, let's, I, I suppose we can take a second here. Oh, actually, you should just look at Sorcerer spells, huh? Yeah, ah, really, there's actually not much. Uh, well, I mean, since other classes could technically take this ability, yeah, because it only costs one, you could you could take this with uh, the feet, too. Yeah, I decided to just go with um, one-minute spells, because the villain's monologuing for ten minutes, they're crazy. Yeah, well, let's see here, do we have any good one-minute spells? Yeah, you can conjure, like, Fey, Elemental, and Celestials. Well, there you go. Conjure Celestial, Conjure Elemental, Conjure Fey... Conjure my or elemental, um, fox familiar. Well, there you go. I mean, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of spells that would be worth doing in your subtle yeah. spell. I, I mean, flock of familiars could be fun if you're trying to do that stage magician thing and you want doves to fly out of your <laughs> out of your sleeves. <laughs> or you could just like summon oh um magnificent mansion. The vi- villain starts monologuing all of a sudden, just a giant mansion appears. <laughs> oh, I oh oh, kill them wicked the witch style. <laughs> drop a house yeah. on him <laughs> uh, alright wind spell when you cast a spell that targets only one creature and doesn't have a range of self you can spend a number of sorcery points equal to the self's level to target a second creature in range of, with that same spell one sorcery point if the spell is a cantrip to be eligible a spell must be incapable of targeting more than one creature at the spell's current level for example, Magic Missile and Scorching Ray aren't eligible, but Ray of Frost and Chromatic Orb are. Ha! There you go. Haste is a good one. There, there's, there's a lot of good spells you can, you can twin if you, if you really put your mind to it. it it's, it, they're not always easy to find, but you can, but if you, if you really look, go the extra mile, if you're gonna take this particular meta magic, then try to focus on spells that you can really use for that. In Tasha's, they added a couple more meta magic options. There's Seeking more. spell. If you make an attack roll for a spell and miss, you can spend two sorcery points to reroll the, the d20, and you must use a new roll. You can use seeking spell even if you've already used a different meta magic option during the casting of the spell. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that and, one. Um, after that. You, there's a transmitted spell. When you cast a spell, if you the type of damage from the following thing list, you can and change. You can spend one sorcery point to change that damage type to one of the other listed types: acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison, thunder. So I like this particular meta magic because it really lets you like just pick the spells you kind of want, like say per se, like just think are have the best utility or are going to work for you the best. But you don't have to worry about trying to spread yourself out to all these different damage types in case you 
come up across a bunch of enemies that are immune to the things you usually use. Yeah, I actually think transmute spell is the most is the best um magic a sorcerer can take because it's just how few spells they learn. Yeah, and I think like say you wanted to really specialize in say fire spells because there's a lot of them. Um, you could specialize in that, and then transmuted spell would give you that option of not making you totally useless against something that has resistance or immunity to fire. Yeah. You could just mix it up to something else, and, yeah. and, and I think it would be really fun for uh, for cinematic purposes to describe how the spell changes as it comes out of you. I just think it could be really cool. Like it starts off as a fireball and then it turns to ice as it flies through the air and then hits him or, you know, changes from ice to poison or something like that. I think that could be a lot of fun to describe that process, you know? Yeah. Also, when I was reading up the list, a a part of me really wanted to say air at the end. (laughs) (laughs) So level four, you get um, ability score improvement or feat, just like most classes do. What do you mean most classes? All classes get ability score feats. <laughs> all right, all classes, you're right. Yeah, they're not. Sorcerer's versatility. Uh, Tasha's spell, by the way. Um, is a fourth level sorcerer's feature. Whenever you reach a level in this class that grants the ability score improvement feature, you can always do one of the following, representing the magic within you flowing in new ways. Replace one of the options you chose from the meta magic feature with a different meta magic option available to, for you. Um, replace one cantrip you learned from this class's spellcasting feature with another cantrip from the sorcerer spell list. I think those are really good. I think that's kind of unique and makes it so like if your character changes a lot, um, you can change your character spells. I like that you can. Uh... You can swap out your cantrips at later levels. It's it's really useful because sometimes something is useful early on and maybe you just haven't used it in three levels or four levels and you're like, maybe I need something different, you know? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Early on, attack cantrips are, like, necessary, but later on they become less necessary. I mean, I, I think they get better as they go up. But yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, some of them they are... They do, yeah. but it's better to just, like, cast a level spell because you just have so many spell slots. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you decide that, hey, maybe I do need to have message or mending or... Yeah. I, I don't actually know if those are sorcerer ones, but you know what I mean. I think they are. Minor Illusion feels like it'd be something really good at low levels, but as you get higher up, you're going to want to just cast the actual illusion spells to do things they're gonna have a little more impact this is also another uh tasha feature um you get at fifth level it's called magical magical guidance you can tap into your inner wellspring of magic to try to conjure success from failure when you make an ability check that fails you can spend one sorcery point to re-roll the d20 and you must use a new roll potentially turning the failure into a success i really like this one in particular, when it comes to skills outside of combat, it gives you yeah. a way when you're doing those really important negotiations and you screw up your persuasion check badly that you can re-roll it by spending a sorcery point. That just gives the sorcerers just this one more extra edge in life in general, a little bit of magicalness to them. But you can go, oh, let, let me rewind that. Instead of calling you a, a pig dog, I, I can call you an emperor god. Okay. That, that 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 would be better. I, I think that's I think that's really good. And then oh yeah. So we go all the way from fifth level to twentieth level. At twentieth level, you get sorceress restoration. So once you get all the sorceress restoration, you gain four expended sorcery points whenever you finish a short rest. Kind of underwhelming. Okay. Yeah, not the best capstone it, ability. It, yeah. It's, it's not, not like druids where they get to cast spells. <laughs> That that druid one. It's crazy. Well, yeah, you cast spells while you're in a beast form and stuff. Or no, it's like unlimited spells or something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Unlimited, unlimited wild shape. You don't get unlimited spells. Oh, that's what it is. Unlimited wild shape and you can cast your spell through. Yeah, there's just something a little more it's it's pretty cool. I mean, granted, I mean one hour of rest so you can get four sorcery points back is nice, but it's not I just spend the spell slot, you know. Well, if you don't have any spell slots, I mean it can be important. But we don't have any spell slots, you should probably we just take a long Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's it's going to be used at, when you're at level 20, but I just don't feel like it makes the impact it should. Obviously, so there's not a whole lot of features, really, when you when you look at it for a sorcerer overall. Kind of like the druid in the same way. Like all spellcasters, really, except for bard and cleric. That's a significant percentage of spellcasters. 
Actually, no, yeah. that's just a subclass. Never mind. Yeah, no, none of them really get abilities mid levels. Yeah, their subclasses are where you're gonna get a lot of the meat of, of yeah. what you're what you're doing. Which we'll discover we'll, we'll discuss next time when we go over, over we'll discover. Three of, <laughs> <laughs> we'll discover the subclasses of the sorcerer. Have, are you like on Discovery <laughs> Channel or something now? You and like, me, God. baby, ain't nothing but mammals. Do it what? like they do on the Discovery Channel. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'll come back. Let us wrap I'm it up. I'm leaving on a spaceship to Mars. <laughs> All right. So there's obviously not a lot of abilities you get as a sorcerer. Most of them are going to come from your subclass, especially between levels 5 and 20. Oh, yeah. Look for them there. We're going to go over the subclasses next week, at least three of them. So uh, wait for us there. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Probably that's you. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you always said that. That is something new, okay? All right, I'll suffocate you in the middle of the night. Um, you're getting there, you're getting there. I'll lick your eyeballs. All right, now move on. <laughs> <laughs> you creep me out. Suffusing, 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 suffusing. What is wrong with you? What is the act? Suffusing all over my body. <laughs> you creep me out. We should throw him into like a murder game and watch him die. All right. <laughs> hey. I'll splice that around so it looks like I let you finish. Um. <laughs> Just don't get my finger guns in there. They look stupid. <laughs>